Hi, Bruce Himmelblau, Blue Sky Video Production, YouTube Strategist, and live stream Producer Director. This week, we have a special guest, Jody Van Leer from J. Van Leer Design, who is really crushing it in the design space, mostly with her ingenuity, her commitment, her drive, and her passion. So let's get into the show. Oops. Hi, Jody. Hi. <laughs> I mean, actually, that's not the same button. Here we go. This is the button we want. And there we go. Key number two is scale. You want to make sure that you have lots of different scales uh, as far as the size of your objects that you're putting out on the front porch. Remember, if you have like a huge front entryway, it's super tall, uh, those traditional poles and things, you want to have larger pieces because if you put something at standard size, it's going to look squatty and short and that's not going to look right. Your proportions are going to be off and it's not going to turn out very well. So you want to scale it in proportion to the space in which you have. Sometimes you can help that by stacking things. For instance, this corner over here, I have one of those wooden crates that we see everywhere at this time. Um, and, then I'm, and then I add other high, tall objects to it, like the um, base that I have here. So it's a metal can, you know, the decorative cans. Um, so that's going to add height. Then I add in more height by adding tall florals to it. So therefore, it gets the scale to where it needs to be in proportion to my door and the area in which it's in. So scale is super important when you're looking at things. So excellent, excellent tips. And you have a whole lot of those uh, because you're actually doing a live stream program as well on Correct. different subjects. I am. So I go live um, every other Wednesday at two o'clock um, and talk about lots of different elements of interior design. Um, I'm a residential interior designer. And so I work with clients in their homes, helping them get through overwhelm, get through being stuck on a remodel or redesign project. Um, and there's lots of elements that go into residential design that I think a lot of people don't know or can't wrap their brain around. Yep. Um, unfortunately or fortunately, a lot of people are into the HGTV shows and all the home improvement shows, and they get kind of um, misrepresentation of what interior designers do. Um, and so I am kind of out there explaining what we do and the realities of what an interior designer does, breaking some of those uh, myths that are out there on how quick projects get done uh, for in the real world, because there's TV land and then there's the real world. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah, I had yeah. a guest on a while back um, who does, he's a fifth degree, a fifth degree black belt in Hapkido. And I was asking him about um, how he would, would describe the martial arts of some of the superheroes on TV. And he described them as Hollywood. Yes, sure. Uh, we have that in our world too. <laughs> the TV production. They they don't ever show you the behind the scene crew that comes in and takes care of it. They don't go through all of the planning that happens ahead of time, all the prep work that goes into it. Um, a lot of the times they also don't describe the amount of money that's being put into these projects to get them to look like they do. Uh, because yep. a lot of affiliates are happening and a lot of things are being donated and all of that type of thing. And so that misconstrues the amount of uh, cost that goes into the project um, and the amount of time that it takes to accomplish what they're showing you. Definitely. So uh, what is the first steps in, I guess, designing your house as well? As, like you talked about uh, working with the space that you have. So if you have a wide space um, in colors, I guess. Yeah, so the first thing, whenever I start to work with a client, I definitely talk about budget first because my goal is to make sure that whatever we're creating within your space lies within your budget. And obviously budget is variable depending on the person. And so, um, you know, you could have $10,000 for a room or you could have $3,000 for a room. Either way, you can still make forward strides in accomplishing the overall look that you want in that space. Um, it's just a matter of how we go about doing that. 
And so budget is always the very first thing that I talk about with people. It's always a sticky subject because people don't like talk about money. They don't want to be transparent with that. Um, It's essential to making sure that we can create the space you want. Sometimes those goals are unrealistic. And so I can talk into that as well. And so maybe it's uh, a matter of waiting just a little bit longer in order to accomplish that um, or changing certain elements of the space in order to get to where you want. Um, And then it goes into inspiration pictures. Uh, A lot of designers are uh, wanting to put their stamp on things. But for me, it's about helping a client really feel at home in their space. And so Mm -hmm. it's more about what the client wants than what I'm looking at. Um, making sure that the good design is still implemented, but that the client is putting their personal mark on their space um, when we're talking about a redesign or a remodel. And so with a lot of these projects, I guess the artistic part of you uh, comes into play when the budget gets lower? It does. There's There can tend to be a, a little bit more DIY projects uh, that go into that, which is exactly up my Allie, I am a major DIYer. Um, I do a lot of the things in my own home with my husband. The two of us together create plans and um, implement a lot of our projects together, which are some of the things that I talk about on my Facebook Lives, um, which is kind of where that all started when we went into the time of COVID and everybody was locked in. Um, I didn't have as many clients coming in. And so that gave me a little bit more time to start working on some of the projects that had been being put off in my own home. Uh, And then I decided to take all of my my people on that journey with me and walk them through uh, the products that I use, the process, what worked, and even some of the things that didn't work. Um, And so that is kind of where the jumping off point came for me going live on social media, which was not something that I had ever thought I would do. Um, but I did the, uh, the term, the COVID pivot. <laughs> I did that and decided to go live, even though it was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> Actually, we're doing a challenge in a couple of weeks, go, a go live challenge that a lot of people, they see others going live. They see the benefits of going live. They see the minimal cost of doing it. It's just that jumping off point of, do I have a half an hour or an hour to do the show? But then there's also prep before the show. Right. I know I know with this program, we, we spent, uh, what, maybe half an hour on the phone, do a pre-interview, kind of get an idea of what subjects to talk about, what uh, what you would like to talk about, what, what uh, our audience wants to hear. Mm-hmm. And then actually pushing that go live button. That's usually right. the hardest thing. What I find <laughs> easier to with a go live button is if you go live with somebody else, because then you're not on there staring at a green light for 15, 20 minutes trying to connect. You have someone else to have a conversation with. Right. I just, I think for me, it was about um, doing it in small steps. Obviously, I didn't do it right every time and I made a lot of mistakes. But, you know, learning from those, looking at watching other people, learning, you know, listening to podcasts, um, listening to other social media people and seeing how they do it. But just, you know, you you have to start somewhere. Um, not everybody starts off 100 percent perfect. So uh, just doing little snippets, you know, at first my I'd go live for maybe five, 10 minutes and it felt like it was forever. And now they end up being a lot longer. And I just feel I try really hard to just make it like I'm talking to a friend, um, yep. regardless of whether anyone is on or not, um, so that my true personality comes through on all of my lives. Um, and so that's kind of, it's it's been really beneficial. It gives my business a different perspective to people, um, the real part of me yep. and how I work. Um, it's been beneficial to give value to my clients. Um, I've had people come through saying that they've seen my videos and decided to give me a call or look up my website due to watching the videos because they found value in them and explained to them a little bit more about me, how I work, and a little bit more about my business. So it's been a really great opportunity for me to get out there and do that. So I think I think you may have already covered this, but what was that impetus moment? We said, I need to do this live. Yeah, it was really 
trying to come up with new avenues to network. Um, I had started networking my business before COVID, which was great personal face-to-face -face opportunities, which I think is where we met as well at um, the GLMB uh, event, but that wasn't possible anymore. So how do I keep my business out in the forefront? It's Interior design is not something that everyone is going to be doing all of the time. It's not a necessity. And so when we're going through this time, my idea was to bring value to people so that when they came back and were ready, that I was the first one that they thought of. Um, and so that meant giving a little bit of free content away in order to gain their trust. Right. What I do takes a lot of trust from my clients. I'm working in their biggest investment that they make. Your home is between your home and your car. <laughs> that is the most amount of money that you're spending on one single thing. And so it takes a lot of trust from my clients to trust me with that. Um, I'm diving a lot into their personal lives, how they mm -hmm. function, what they like, what they don't like, how their family functions. And so that takes trust. Um, and in order to do that, I felt like I needed to give them more of me uh, to, to gain that trust. Right. And then also you, you forgot to mention your boat and your airplane. My what? Your boat and your airplane are also your two, two more of your basic basis expenses. Your yeah. house, your car, your boat, and your airplane. Sure, sure. Yeah, I have one of those in the backyard. <laughs> so yeah, so here uh, we got some comments here. Uh, quick comment on Stu. As far as logistics here, we're using a platform called StreamYard. Mm -hmm. And Stu is also in the video production business. And Morning Eric, uh, keeping the social and social media is key, definitely. Yeah, it is. And uh, great job. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. And, uh, and then Eric is saying hi to Kim. <laughs> and then I, got I guess we got to throw this comment as well, because actually I do have a good hair day. So. Oh, there I don't you know, go. I don't know how this happens. Every, it's, usually, uh, every time I go live, my hair looks different. And so no uh, no product. Uh, are you using product as well? <laughs> it's all natural? <laughs> Great. Yeah, I guess yep. that's what, that's another thing about going live is that self confidence of I look good no matter what it, what I look like. Well, and sometimes yeah, sometimes the most uh, natural. I mean, some people build their entire platforms on that fact that they are natural, right? Uh, that they don't have any makeup on or they didn't do their hair or whatever the case may be. Especially moms with kids and things like that. They're you know uh, they're being real. People want um, real in the world that we live in right now because social media has taken over so much and there's so much uh, out there that can be edited and messed with and people are kind of pulling away from that and wanting um, real. So that's also right. giving me the opportunity to do that as well uh, when walking my clients through the process of how I do things um, in my own home, it shows um, that I'm not just talking about it and suggesting something that I've never done. And that's kind of what sets me apart as well from different designers is that I've worked in several different industries um, in my time. I have a, a degree in interior design, so I didn't get a certificate online or just say I'm good at it. Um, I actually went and got a four year BA in interior design, um, which allows me more insight into construction and how things are implemented. Um, and so when I'm talking to contractors, I can talk to them with knowledge on how things are implemented, not just um, a designer coming in and trying to tell them what to do. And they appreciate that and respect that, which makes a good working relationship, which also helps keep your project moving faster um, as long as all the materials are in. Uh, that's been a problem with COVID is, is materials and getting those in. But um, when you have a good working team on your project, then it helps things go a lot smoother and have, be less stressful. So it's super important to know that information and have mm -hmm. that in the back pocket. So you do more than just bring in furniture and pick out paint and chips. You're Correct. you're you're talking about redesigning a room or adding on an additional to, addition to a house or actually remodeling that that area. Absolutely. Um, I'm looking. I'm working on a kitchen gut remodel right now um, where we're taking out all of the cabinetry and re replacing everything, taking on an island and moving things around, creating a space that fits the home and the client better. 
So with that, there's a lot of details that go into that. So you really need to have somebody who understands construction, how things are installed, um, layouts and spacing. And um, yeah, there's a lot more detail that goes into a kitchen or a bathroom model than adding in the pretty jewelry on the, uh, on the back end of things. And so as far as your business goes, it's definitely changed over the past eight, nine months. How are you networking? How are you connecting with your past clients and your current clients? Yeah, so I do a lot of um, networking virtually now. So Zoom calls uh, are my network base right now, meeting with other businesses and learning from them on how they're doing things, how they're staying forefront in their clients' minds. Mm -hmm. um, and then also the social media has been a big part for me. I'm on I think almost every platform I could possibly be on, um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, um, Nextdoor, House, um, anywhere that my ideal client is, is, is where I try to be uh, so that when they're ready to do their project, then I'm, I'm there for them to find. Um, I'm on, you know, Google. So if you go and search me there, you'll find, you'll find me there and be able to find my website and connect that way. Um, I do a monthly newsletter as well, also giving my people, anybody who signs up on my website, it gives them a little bit more detail on a specific subject um, that they get that in their inbox once a month. So I'm really about adding value to my clients and helping them, helping them see what value I can add for them. And so we can take a quick look at your, at your website. To, uh, to see some of the information that you have there. Let me see here real quick. And here we go. So design is, you got about me, the interior design, the home staging and the e-design. So you actually you're, you're enabled your clients to actually go online and do some testing. Is that what this e-design is? Um, it talks a little bit about it and how the process of it. Um, and that's kind of getting a little bit more implemented as we're continuing on in the COVID. Um, it's not something that I had as a package prior to COVID because it is a little bit more challenging and a little bit more legwork for the client uh, because I need them to take pictures of their space, take measurements and, and those types of things, which I would normally do. Um, so they have to have a little bit more um, input into it and that back end uh, for us to be able to accomplish what they're looking for. But it does give us another option for people that are not in state or moving out of state, for people who have, um, you know, immune deficiencies or things like that, challenges okay. that keep, you know, keep me from being able to come into the home or for them to to let others into the home. And so it gives me another option. And I've done quite a few over this COVID time, some e-designs, uh, e virtual walkthroughs with people so that we can get a good sense of this space and then be able to move forward with a redesign. Um, those are mostly just redesigns, not remodels. I can't do a remodel uh, virtually, but I can do more of the redesign aspect of it. So home staging, That's so if you're selling your home, Correct. Yes. So it is another small part of my business as far as helping people get their home ready so that when people are now, you know, virtually shopping for homes, they're moving out of state and they're never stepping foot into the home before they purchase. And so the pictures that people are po that your realtor is posting on the MLS um, are absolutely crucial. You only have six seconds to get it right. So you want to make sure that your home is shown the best it possibly can be. And so I go in and help people accomplish that. It's usually about decluttering and getting things out of the home so that it can be shown as big and spacious as it can be. Um, sometimes it's some updating, some minor updating. It does take a little bit of investment sometimes if you haven't done anything in the last you know, 15 years, then you might need to change your paint colors or change your hardware change your light fixtures, that type of thing. Um, but that nominal amount is generally less than your first price cut. So having someone come in and guide you with what most people are looking for in a home um, to give them that feel of move in ready really helps my helps my clients not have to take that first price cut or um, 
and, and then, or they're for sell faster so that they're not sitting on the market for so long. And Peter just uh, added the uh, URL into the chat. So this, that's the site we're looking at. So again, yeah, yeah, cause we're actually selling my parents' home and it's a 60 year old home um, that's pretty much original design, but we've pretty much taken all the furniture out and now it's an empty house. Right. So that's something you can bring in. Um, the furniture, I'm guess, is rental as opposed to repurchase and, and reuse. Right. If if it's completely empty, generally, I suggest that people do rental and bring bring pieces in. Um, most of the time, I work with people still living in the homes, and so it's more about um, what can we kind of pare down and maybe put pre-pack so that you're you're kind of accomplishing two things at the same time. You're pre-packing, so now you calmly been able to pack things away, label them, make sure that you know where everything is and pare things down. And then, um, and so that you get a jump start on that. Um, and then really showing off the layout and the flow of the home, um, doing those minor updates that will just make the new homeowner fall in love with the home and be able to picture themselves in the home. That's a little bit different than the remodeling redesign in that it's not then about you, it's about the person coming into the home and them being able to picture themselves in there. So it's taking out your yeah. personal pictures, taking out all of your, your personality really, and making it as neutral as possible so that the new homeowner can see themselves in the space. Yeah, we, when we were first looking for our house, there was one house that uh, belonged to an artist and she had her artwork Yes. On the wall. <laughs> right. And right. I think I think one of the pieces of art was a styrofoam sculpture um dressed up as a lady. He's like, okay, this is a unique piece. Um <laughs> right. not, right. not something that I can see uh using in my home. So right. again, and wow. then uh we Peter's okay. also look actually looking okay. for your uh, your location. So you do you serve the greater Chicago area? I do. I'm in Gurney. I'm based out of Gurney, but I've traveled as far as Crystal Lake, Deer Park, uh, Lurdyville, Mundelein, Vernon Hills this is the general area. Um, depending on the project, I can I will venture out farther, but that's generally my base. And so how do you find the furniture? Do you, I mean, before COVID, do you actually go to um, travel abroad looking for stuff? Do you go to sales at looking for information uh, type things to fit into your client's look? Yeah, so it depends on the budget for the client. There's many different levels of furniture that I have, um, that I know about that I can suggest for my clients. Ultimately, as far as I work, the interior design industry isn't regulated as far as how much you can charge, how you structure your business, um, and how you go about uh, finding and resourcing your product. So for most designers, they are um, part of an affiliate program and they get discounts and then they are sometimes Sometimes they are passing those discounts along and sometimes they are not. That's part of their profit. Um, so they may charge differently on their design fees, but then they're banking on the profit on the product itself. For me, I have my clients purchase their product straight out. I make suggestions in accordance to the new floor plan layout that we do and all of the things that they want. So I give them suggestions on what I think will work best and coordinate together. Um, I walk them through the reasoning for all of that so that they understand where it is that I'm coming from and why I'm making the suggestions that I am. Um, and then I let them go ahead and make those purchases. It makes them feel more in control. It also gives them the opportunity to, um, you know, make their, make those decisions and uh, pay less, pay me less per hour to be able to do those things. And so they get to decide how much they want to pay for a designer to do it versus how much they are willing to do themselves. Um, so that's run quite a bit differently than most designers. I am not um, your high-end designer that's going to take you to the mart and spend $5,000 on an end table. Um, I do some shopping. I will suggest some things from uh, companies that I know. Um, but then I will also say, if you find something at Home Goods that is within our parameters, go ahead and purchase it. You know, so it gives my clients a little bit more control on how much they're spending on the project. It also helps with being able to keep within their budget, which is my goal. And do you get into, into color picking and uh, matching and, and 
what colors should you never put together? <laughs> I, I do have um, a color consultations as part of my packaging. Um, and so I can come in and give you a consultation on different colors, especially when you're getting ready to put your home for sale. Uh, certain colors should not be prevalent in your home when you're trying to neutralize for someone coming in. Um, if your favorite color is neon green, I'm probably going to still tell you to take that out um, because that could be appealing to the next person coming in. Um, there are some trends and colors uh, that come, but they change uh, quite often. And so when it's about you putting your stamp on your home for the long term, say 10, 15 years, then there are some rules as far as making sure you're not mixing warms and cools together and then they're fighting each other um, and they don't go with your flooring or they don't go with your furniture. And so I can walk my clients through that. But it's really more so about what colors make you feel at home in your space. Um, not putting a super dark color in a small room that you're going to be in every day because it's going to feel like a dungeon. Um, also, if you go too white and that's not really who you are, it's going to feel stark and hospital-like. So you it's digging into my clients and who they are and how they function, what makes them feel at home versus what's the trend for this month because that's going to change next month. <laughs> well, you've got a nice design on your wall behind you. Thank is you. That, is that your home office? It is. Um, it's a ombre mural that I painted on the wall. And then I also created the business sign, uh, one of those DIY projects that I, <laughs> that I decided to take on. Yeah, so with me, I've got this banner here behind me, which kind of like covers up a big drawer or, or dresser system here. Right, right. And I threw a couple items on the left side. I got my my, my, my select, select select books here and, and another cover there. So only piece of only white wall you see is a small piece, a small patch back there. So I guess when I usually talk to clients, it's like keep your area uh, void of, of clutter. Right. Although with this, we've kind of darkened the background by illuminating the foreground. So it kind of draw, draws into the uh, into the dark there. So it's not as distracting right. as if this whole room were lit up and you can see everything behind you just as clear as, as everything in the foreground. Right, right. Yeah, I, this was a project that happened due to COVID. I, I was sitting in the spare bedroom with all of the junk in the room when we started out. And so I had the opportunity to um, take on this project and redesign it. And I actually have that posted on my Facebook page. So if anybody wants to walk through that journey with me on how I redesigned this space, you can um, go onto my Facebook page and go through my videos and be able to see that there. So yeah, this was a fun project. Uh, gave me a lot more organization and just so much easier to be able to work from this space than it was before. <laughs> and Eric, Eric has a question is, how does design work into feng shui? And are you a proponent of feng shui? Um, I am. I am not a big, um, I don't know a lot about feng shui, to be honest with you. Um, there are so many different niches within interior design. Um, and that is one of them. There is a lot of philosophy that goes into feng shui as far as placement and furniture, colors in the space, uh, materials within the space. It's there are a lot of designers that specifically focus on feng shui um, and know a whole lot more about it than I do. Um, I've touched on it, but not enough to be an expert at it. So again, what's the best way to contact you? Because you said you have your show. Is that, is that uh, streaming on Facebook? It streams on Facebook uh, at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Um, I am at jvanleerdesigns.com. Uh, you can find me on Facebook under the same and Instagram uh, at J Van Leer Designs. I am also on LinkedIn. I am on Nextdoor. So any of those places you can find me all under the same name. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah, that is one of my biggest proponents is be the same name on everything so that if people want to cross platform, they can find you. Yeah, my name is hard enough with the space in between as it is. Half of my mail comes out wrong. So <laughs> I just ran it all together. Um, and so it's all, I just wanted to keep it all the same as simple as possible. Here it is, it is J Van Leer Design, no, Designs with an S, right? Yes, yep. Okay, let me take it off real quick. Great. <laughs> so ignore the, the, uh, the, gene, the, uh, the man behind the curtain. There you go, designs.com, save. And here we go. 
There we go. And there's two E's in Lear. Correct. And I again, uh, I, I love your framing on your uh, on your camera, where you're actually leveled with the uh, with the image with your. your... I, I listen to you. I try. <laughs> And then also what's really important is whenever you're on camera, don't don't block your name. So Right. <laughs> I think I, I learned that from, from Marvel. I think there was a Marvel comic book at one point where they had a design and it was blocking the title of the comic book and the editors uh, shot it down because it's like you, you don't block your brand. Well, it's sometimes if you mar uh, mar move over some of the letters, you might get something you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Excellent. So it's great having you on the show. Thank and you. I look forward to seeing you in real life one of these days at one of our networking meetings. Yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And what I'm going to do is uh, real quick is bring up this for uh, those on YouTube. If you look right here, we'll put a link to uh, Jody's information as well as my channel. And then there'll be a video over here. So again, thank you for joining us and see you next week on BSV 